Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I wanted to try something different today. So I am doing a scenery of a bridge and some trees, but with a really nice kind of a purpley red color. Um, I think it's called uh, berry wine. Um, I can double check on that. It's, oh sorry, Sweetheart Blush is the name of it. And I just use a little bit of white to give a lighter color to put in the center and then blend them all together. Now you can notice that on my rock, I have like little marks all the way around, sort of like a, a dial. And I have those there so later when I am finished the inside and I put my frame on it, that is a good indicator where I want to have my dots. So, um, this time I did it before I started painting. Most of the other times I've done it after I've done the painting and it's almost a, it's a pain because I've got to wait for everything to dry before I put my stencil on so that I can make the mark. So I kind of thought ahead and I did it before I um, started painting. So the marks are there and I'm happy with it. So as I mentioned, I'm using a uh, Sweetheart Blush. Uh, it's by Delta and um, I just wanted to do something different rather than my regular sunsets or my regular sunrises or night skies or anything like that. So I wanted to try something different sort of out of the box. Um, so I used this color and it worked really really nice. It um, blended in well and I just keep blending um, to make sure that I've got the effect that I really want and I start with um, uh, at the beginning what I did was I started with just the the pure color of it and I did the outside of the the circle that I had drawn on with my compass and then I uh, made a lighter color by adding a little bit of white and then I blended those together and then I used white pure white in the middle with a different sponge. So remember, I always use a different sponge for each color, except for the white one, because it will eventually blend itself in. So now I am drawing on the bridge that I want, just as a guideline, and then the horizon, which is under the bridge. And then I've got to put the forefront. So like the details that I'm going to put at the front of um, my painting. So I do the bridge first because I'm going to cover some of it up anyways. So I thought I might as well get the bridge put on first, then I can paint over top of it. That way that's the focus of it. That's where your, your eye is drawn. So I wanted to do that first. And I'm just using um, a makeup brush that I got off of Amazon. If you're interested in getting yourself some, I've listed the link in the description below. Um, so make sure that you go and check that out. They're fairly inexpensive. They last a long time. I think it's a pack of 100 and I've barely put a dent into it. So um, what I'm doing now is I am putting on the shimmer that I really wanted on before I started painting the bridge. So I'm just letting you folks know that, you know, we all make mistakes, but in a painting, you can easily work around it. So I wanted this nice bright shimmer to be on the back and it's a, a glitter paint um, and uh, it's called uh, Enchanted Shimmer. And I just wanted to put it on because it's, it's a new paint that I have and I'm really, really liking it. So. Uh, I wanted to put it on and get it all nice and covered, but if I do go over the black, it's okay because then once it's dry, I can go over the glimmer or the glitter paint with black paint. Um, I also wanted to um, make sure that I got into all the nooks and crannies and stuff, and then I wanted a reflection on the water because, I mean, a bridge goes over water, right? You, I suppose it goes over other things too, like railroad tracks and stuff, but this is a walking path, so um, I really wanted it to have that reflection of the sunset um, on the water. So I'm just using my blending brush uh, that I created, and I am 
just putting on, I put on some, some white and now I'm going back in with some of the mixed paint that I made of the, um, the blush color mixed with white and just dabbing it in here and there uh, just to blend it in. And then I do um, do some, I guess, swiping. Uh, I use, um, there, I'm doing it there. So it gives the illusion that it is shining off of the water um, by stretching it out. And that's the effect that I was looking to uh, get. So now I'm just doing some touch-ups because, yeah, like I said, I kind of painted over top of some of the, the black that I put in for the paint or sorry, for the, for the bridge. And so now I'm just, you know, touching it up. And uh, with paint, it's so easy to be able to do this. You don't have to be absolutely perfect. And it's all about what's, what's in your mind's eye and you getting it on the canvas. Now I use art rocks or art stones. Um, this one is a precasted mold that I used uh, that I received from the Happy Dot and Company. If you're interested in getting your own molds, I have listed a, a link in the description below to her Etsy shop. So go to the Happy Dot and Company and she has all sorts of different um, molds that you can use for uh, making round, round stones, making oval stones. She even has candle holders, all sorts of stuff. So now I've got to make this really look like a bridge. So what I'm doing is putting these little rails on uh, that go, uh, they extend from one side all the way to the other. And all I did was use my fine lining brush uh, that I've created. Um, if you're interested in how to make these brushes, um, you can certainly go on over to uh, Rachel's Rocks Canada. She has some great tutorials on not just making the brushes, but she's got some amazing tutorials on painting as well. Uh, so definitely go and check her out. Um, but this, uh, this is a uh, fine lining brush that I created. Uh, it was just an old brush that the um, bristles were starting to spread apart. So I cut most of them off and just left a small amount and that's what I use and uh, I can get into doing some pretty good detail with it. So it's worth um, worth chopping up the, the uh, paintbrush so that you can uh, have this. And I use it in every single painting that I do, uh, unless I'm doing just mandala dots, um, then I don't use it. Um, but definitely it's something that's in my arsenal of paintbrushes that I use all the time and uh, it's really, really great. So now what I'm doing is I'm working on the forefront and I'm putting in sort of like a little bush or a little tree. And I decided I was gonna make this more of like a fall kind of um, scenery because even though there's not a lot of colors, the sky is darker and I thought, yeah, some of these trees don't have leaves on them. So once I get into the other trees, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but I'm just adding uh, some grass in the front here. And it's just using your fine lining brush and doing a quick flip or flick. Or, you know, you go from the bottom up and uh, you do it very quickly. And you end up with these little sprigs that look like grass. So now I'm putting in the uh, tree trunks of where I want the trees to be and adding in some branches. And again, using just my fine lining brush and some black paint. And you can get so creative with this and nothing is a mistake when you do this. Nothing in nature is perfect. And that's why I love painting uh, nature scenes and things like that because you don't have to be perfect because mother nature is not perfect. And that just means that, uh, at least to me, that everyone is different and it would be really boring if we were all the same. So having everything different, everything from grains of sand to shapes of rocks to tree branches and colors and flowers and you name it, anything uh, that is in nature is not perfect. And it just tells me that we all are unique and we all have 
things that are different from each other, which makes us who we are, our individuals. So I, that's why I love nature so much. So I'm using my blending brush um, at this point to just dab on um, very randomly, just all over the place, um, some uh, branch or not branches, uh, leaves or the, I guess this would be more like an evergreen tree. So um, it's just a matter of putting the paint down. And again, it doesn't really matter where you do it. Um, it's mother nature. So um, I did that on both sides and those trees are in the forefront. So uh, that's why it was okay to cover up some of the bridge. Now I'm going in with a uh, gray color and it's just to give highlights uh, of the tree branches and the needles and the leaves and all that good stuff. So um, I just dab it on over top and then I'm putting in a little bit of the same color as grass uh, so it's got a bit of a shine to it as well and this is all coming from the light source from the sunset so I'm also doing the outlines of this little bush at the bottom that has no leaves on it I'm just doing the the bark on on it and I do the one at the top as well the the tree branches that are sort of breaking out of the evergreen and uh, popping through but again no leaves let me know if you like this video by giving me the thumbs up. And if you like this video and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell because it'll give you a notification every time I post something new. Here I'm just adding a few more sprigs of grass with the light source that's coming from the uh, sunset and just dotting it with my finger so that I can dull it down a bit. Now for the frame, I use again my uh, my fine lining brush and I'm putting a frame of gold around it so you can use any colors that you want uh, all of the colors that I've used in this tutorial are listed in the description below so check that out but um, I just use whatever's in my stash so um, definitely make it your own you can use whatever color you want make it a blue make it a um, a purple or yellow whatever you want um, and once I did the frame and I'm sorry that I didn't record it but I decided to make it thicker to make that um, that blush color that I used really stand out so it goes on kind of like a burgundy color or a light burgundy color but it dries to this beautiful like a wine color and I just love it so that's why I had to use it and it's why I put the gold as a thicker band around so that it really showed up because it kind of got swallowed up by the black so um, that's what I did and um, I used my dotting tools that I got from the dotting center the link in the dis is, is in the description as well for that. Um, there's a 10% discount if you use my discount code. And I love these dotting tools. They're all that I use now. Um, all of my other ones are in a box somewhere that I don't even open. So <laughs> um, I just, I, I love my new dotting tools. So definitely check her out. Um, now I'm just using a nail stylus just to add that... Uh, mixture that I made at the beginning of the video for the blending and put that on there and then I do some walking of the dots so I do one in the middle and without reloading my tool I walk three dots up to that we'll call it a pink dot um, then I re-dot the center dot and move up to the pink dot so here's a close-up of it for you and it shows you that you can easily get three dots in so I do this all the way around the rock and it gives it that lace look which turned out really nice and it framed up the picture so beautifully and I was very pleased with it and it's a very simple technique to do and it just gives this elegance to it. So I, like I said I did this all the way around and then I did a top dot of white on top of the pink ones just to finish it off. So remember folks, life is what you make it, so get creative. Mm -hmm.